The next component in our ideal model circuit is an ideal model resistor or light bulb. Now resistors are drawn either like this, a zigzag line, or as a box, both are used. Light bulbs are normally drawn in a circuit diagram as a filament, maybe with or without a glass bulb around it. Now, for all these components, if it's ideal, we assume that the amount of current that flows through it depends on the voltage across it. If there's the same voltage on both sides of a resistor or a light bulb, no current flows through it. But if the potential, the voltage is higher on one side than the other, then a current will flow. And the current is given by the voltage difference across the resistor, i.e. how much more voltage is on one side than the other, divided by the resistance. And that is the famous Ohm's law. The other equation we normally use for these things tells you about the power dissipated. If you put a voltage across a resistor and current through it, then it will usually get hot. Some energy is being wasted as heat, and light bulb come out as light. And the power is equal to the volts across times the current through it. And this remember is not the voltage at both sides, it's the difference in voltage from one side to the other. And by substituting this, you can rearrange that, so that is the same thing as V squared over R, or if you substitute the other way in, you get V equals I times R, so you get I squared R. So that is our ideal, perfect model resistor. How realistic is it? Well, for actual resistors, it's actually pretty good. Ohm's law is followed pretty closely, not perfectly, but pretty closely, unless you stop putting pretty big current through it, in which case the resistor will start heating up, the resistance will change, and this whole uh, equation will start breaking down. For light bulbs, it's a much worse approximation. Light bulbs are often approximated as being resistors, but the trouble is that by the very design of them, they heat up, and the heat up increases the resistance, energy's coming out, and so this is rather less accurate for light bulbs. It's okay if you have a fairly small current through them, but as soon as the current becomes big, and you need a big current to make it shine, it's really not a very good approximation. Let alone LED lights or fluorescent lights, in which case they are nothing like this.